All right, everybody, welcome in to another episode of the NFL Seekers podcast. Today, we're mocking. We're going to do a post wave one of free agency mock draft. Most of wave one of free agency has happened. A lot of blockbuster moves, a lot of big offensive names, Kirk Cousins, Saquon, Josh Jacobs, uh, all moving teams, a lot of just changes that are happening and it's going to affect this mock draft. So we're going to, we're going to go through um, kind of every team's biggest moves and, and how they affect, um, you know, how they're going to pick in the first round of the mocks. So it's going to be a fun one. i um, excited for another mock with you uh, a little bit late on mock draft Wednesday this week, but how are you? Yeah, I had to postpone it mock Wednesday. Um, sorry, lads who wanted the mock Monday, but I had to push it back because of an important free agency. And it's been an exciting week, man. It's um, felt like Christmas this week. You know, it's crazy. The NFL, how they how they schedule free agency is just brilliant and so fun. And the first couple of days are just absolutely electric. So we're pretty much past that first wave. Uh, we will go over, obviously, what these teams drafted or signed, excuse me, and, you know, how that affects the draft. So should be should be a more even accurate mock as, as we get closer and closer, get more accurate, more accurate with the information we find out and the players who are on the team. So um, it'll be fun. And I'm excited to dive into this one. Yes, some teams eliminating themselves from taking quarterback like the Falcons, who who took Kirk. They're they're all in now, so they're out of the quarterback uh, discussion. So you can kind of narrow some things down. Uh, some fits are more evident. Some team needs are more evident. So it's going to be fun to get into it. We'll get right into it. A lot to talk about. Do you want to do the the good old fashioned coin flip? Yes, sir. Got it ready. We've uh we've upgraded to a nickel now. Got to know our coinage, Dan. Super as always. Nickel. You are the visitor. You get the call. I'm going to go uh, heads on the Seekers nickel. All right. And it's tails. Give it to the kid. The kid no. wants. I'll defer. I'll defer. I'll defer. Um, actually, wait. What did? What did? I'll, I'll defer. I, I want the. I want the second pick. I want. I want. I want odds. Or I'm sorry. Excuse me. I, I want evens. All right. You sure? You yes. want to give me odds? I'll give you odds. I'll give you odds. I, I want evens because at number two, I, I really do not like what the consensus is talking about. So I need to, I need to get that straight. All right. Well, we'll start it off with the Chicago Bears then. And interesting offseason. You you bring in DeAndre Swift to to be um, you know, a, a good receiving back. He's coming off a decent season in Philadelphia. I didn't love the signing. I thought it was a little bit of overpay for a running back that you can find uh, cheaper, really, for the same production. So didn't love the DeAndre Swift signing. They they secured Jalen Johnson. That was huge. Kevin Bayard was a little bit interesting as well. But I, I do like how that Bears defense is looking. They're looking like they're going to be um, pretty dangerous, and Ibrafus is going to be coaching this team up to be pretty competitive. And you, you insert Caleb Williams into that situation. It's pretty electric. I genuinely am starting to think the Bears are going to be playoff contenders year one just because Caleb is, is is a stud, man. He really is a transcendent quarterback. The team's going to buy in and rally around him. He's a he's just a good leader and uh, just a, a baller, man. He, he makes some crazy plays, and I have no doubt he's going to be a superstar in this league. So the Bears have a no-brainer pick at one. Not going to spend too much time on it. Yeah, nothing exciting. Obviously, the Bears did make some fun – you know, <clears throat> acquisitions, they're kind of interesting, but I mean, they go get tight end Gerald Everett to pair with um, Mr. Cole Komet. Um, you, you know, you ultimately end up losing. So when we get to pick nine, you end up losing Darnell Mooney, free agency. Um, but yeah, you had DeAndre Swift, Gerald Everett, Kevin Bayard, you re-signed Jalen Johnson, Jonathan Owens. Just, you know, they did, they they had a pretty solid free agency. They They might have overpaid, but they did have money and they're they're looking to be competitive in year one. And this is just a no-brainer pick. When we get to nine, that should be a little bit more interesting. Yeah. And this this team's starting to look just nice. You've got like your starting five filled out on that offensive line. You've got your secondary pretty much filled out now. Uh, bringing in Kevin Byard. You you pair him with Brisker on the back end with uh Tariq Stevenson, Jalen Johnson, Kyler Gordon. It's Pretty fun stuff. They're filling that roster out, and I really do think they can they can definitely be playoff contenders in that tough NFC North uh, in Caleb's first year. So, electric pick. Uh, do you want to go into your first pick with the Commanders? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, the Washington Football Commanders are going to take surprise, surprise. It's Drake May. It's always been Drake May. It'll always be Drake May. 
don't overthink this one, man. I know Jaden Daniels had an electric season, but I mean, when you when you when you stand Drake May and Jaden Daniels side by side, I mean, you got Josh Allen, you know, compared to you know skinny Batman over there, it looks like Devonte Smith, you know, playing quarterback. And Drake May, dude, let's just let's not overthink it. Two years of elite PFF grades, big time throws, big time quarterback, huge arm, sneaky athletic. And I think, you know, I think he's the right pick and I think he's the right fit. And I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up being the best quarterback in this draft class. Maybe Caleb Williams is a little bit more electric now, but I could ultimately see, and I'm this is not a very hot take for me. I, I really ultimately see Drake May maybe developing into the best quarterback of this class. Yeah, this is really the conversation of Drake May or Jaden Daniels. You're hearing a lot of buzz right now for Jaden Daniels. And it's, you know, it's kind of 50-50. I think, uh, you know, everyone's saying that Daniels is the more Kingsbury guy. But I don't know. I feel like Drake May is a better athlete than people are giving him credit for. And he is he's a really good runner in his own right. He can, you know, buy time, uh, make plays on his feet. So, I don't know. I think Drake May is honestly the more Kingsbury quarterback. Uh, the stock exchange made up a good point that – Drake May is more like Mariota than uh, Jaden Daniels is. He really is. He he <laughs> plays. He has that same play style. Jaden Daniels has that YOLO uh, running style, and yeah, that's kind of just a a bad comp, honestly. Drake May kind of does play like twenty twenty four Mariota. So I, I think Drake May is the pick as well, and you can't go wrong with it. He is in his own tier, uh, right below Caleb Williams, uh, transcendent quarterback. Yeah, we'll just talk about, you know, some of Washington's notable additions, which was quarterback Marcus Mariota, which kind of gives you a bridge quarterback. Um, if you don't believe your guy is ready to start right away, Marcus Mariota can step in there and be a plug and play, obviously, day one and be a veteran for that team. Uh, they add aging running back Austin Eckler, aging tight end Zach Ertz. So a lot of age <laughs> right there. Um, a lot of old guys. But, you know, with that, it brings leadership and, you know, locker room presence which is good and then uh tyler biadesh uh clellan farrell frankie luvu bobby wagner jeremy chin brandon mcmanus so quite a few guys quite a bit of um noticeable players so they're definitely active in free agency um but yeah nothing that would deter us from taking a uh, quarterback here at pick number two yeah i like you bringing in um dorance armstrong and tyler biadesh uh, over from dallas but other than that I, I didn't like the the bringing in the veterans for this rebuilding roster who you had the most cap space in the entire NFL. You definitely, I, I didn't like the the veteran moves, but yeah, with that, you, you lock in Drake may we'll move on to pick three with the Patriots. This is a tough discussion. The Marvin Harrison versus Jaden Daniels uh, discussion. I think it is kind of down to those two. Don't really think there's any, um, anyone wanting to trade it for Jaden Daniels at this point, unless it's the Raiders. Uh, I could see Antonio Pierce uh, calling on the other line right now, but in the end, after thinking about it more, you know, you bring in Jacoby Brissett, by the way, I guess that's kind of their biggest offseason move so far. You re-sign um, Kendrick Bourne, who's not going to be from <laughs> Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think Marvin Harrison versus Jaden Daniels is so hard, but I'm going to go Jaden Daniels. I'm tilting on. I still am not fully uh, decided between the two because I don't think uh, Gerard Mayo's at all decided on this, so I will go Jaden Daniels. Uh, feels like him and Mayo would have a good pairing. Uh, he's coming off that high end season, a really good season, and seems like he is going to go top three. You see him, you know, going two in a lot of mock drafts. So I'll stick with the kind of consensus that he is going to go top three, and I'll I'll lock him into the Patriots, even if it's most likely what I would not do. Yeah, I think no matter what, it's it's interesting actually to be honest with you because in my head it's like, you know, they brought in Jacoby Brissett, so. You know, that's actually a really good for on a one year, eight million dollar. I thought that was actually a really good, you know, team deal for them. I thought it was a very smart move. Um, so it gives them flexibility in this draft. Um, but yeah, it's like, I mean, I guess that Jacoby percent, I mean, yeah, whether it's what you I mean, I feel like they'll feel comfortable taking either quarterback, to be honest with you. I think no matter what, we're gonna see quarterback, quarterback, quarterback go the first three picks, but it does give you the flexibility. I just want to note that bringing in Jacoby Brissett to get a Marvin Harrison Jr or at least scare the Cardinals or, you know, at least, at least get teams thinking that you could go in a different route. So it gets teams thinking. So I, I, I really love the move. You obviously brought Kendrick Bourne back in. Uh, you bring Antonio Gibson in, in free agency, uh, Jalen Rager, you resign Hunter Henry, bring in Austin Hooper, the 
Patriots keep the theme of, you know, paying two tight ends. Um, you saw, re-signed Mike and one in Wenu, which was huge. Um, you re-signed Josh Uche, um, and you, you get Kyle Duggar back. So, you know, they kept some of their, you know, bigger name free agent guys and brought in, you know, I thought, I thought that, I thought it's been a decent first way for them, you know, no, no home run picks, um, or hits, but just solid. Solid, uh, first wave bringing in their, you know, best talent that was, uh, available on the market. So we'll, we'll lock in Jaden Daniels at three. It's going to start a domino effect. Who are the Cardinals going to go for? So <laughs> for, for just one minute, I, I thought there was a chance. So the Cardinals, um, earlier today ended up releasing DJ Humphreys and me being a Chargers fan immediately, my head went to, oh my God. Oh my God, they're taking Joe Alt. They're taking Joe Alt at four. Please God, take Joe Alt at four. Um, but that only lasts for about two seconds because um, about 20 minutes later, they re- or they sign uh, Jonah Williams from the Bengals. And so, you know, the plan stays the same. The plan stays the same. Ultimately, for the Cardinals, it's Marvin Harrison Jr. or trade out. And I don't really know how tempted they'll be to want to trade out of this position. I think they'll want to keep it, take the generational talent. I feel like they have enough draft capital already in this draft. And yeah, you go get you go get your no brainer, blue chip prospect, best receiver of the decade. You don't think twice about it. And me as a Charger fan, I am uh, crying. And you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna act like it, but I, I'm shattered. But I'm gonna keep a straight face on, even though that Matt Prater field goal want to freaking slap that guy in the head um we'll move on we'll move on we'll act like we move it on we're clearly not moved on from it but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah no reason to not take marvin harrison jr it's it's still a lock of this pick it feels like one of the most you know unless the patriots somehow or for some reason take him marvin harrison jr is looking like a cardinal yeah stores have some ptsd over here uh missing out on him but it's for good reason because the cardinals are so happy that they are able to get this generational, generational receiver prospect, in my opinion, the best receiver prospect of all time, literally made in a lab, um, spent his whole life to get here. So crazy, crazy um, pick that the the Cardinals are able to pair him with Kyler. And I think it's going to be electric over there in Arizona. Perfect situation. Don't really need to talk about it too much. I, I do like what the Cardinals are doing in free agency so far, kind of just, you know, throwing some, some contracts at some startable guys. I like Sean Murphy running a lot. So um, fun stuff so far. You bring in Marvin Harrison. You can't really complain. Uh, Jonah Williams on the right. You move Paris Johnson to the left. You're, you're you're looking pretty good. Don't forget about DJ Dallas. Come on, man. Mr. Sorry. DJ Dallas coming Sorry for the disrespect, from, DJ. from the from the division rival Seahawks. Man, it's gonna make a difference out there. <laughs> I think he's from the Bears, isn't he? Did I, oh, he was on the. I, I don't even know. I, I, <laughs> I'm not sure. He was I'm on the Seahawks like, a few years ago, for sure. <laughs> what was he a bear? Was he a bear? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Freaking waiver wire legend DJ Dallas coming out to the Cardinals. Love to see it. Legend. He's he's gonna be uh, making a push for that starting job over John James Conner. But with that, should we move on to pick five? Yes, sir. What do you What do you got my Chargers doing here, Dan? Call me. Uh, do, do you want to call me? Because I, I want to trade down, man. So so I'm going to I'm going to accept a call. And I think there's two teams on the line right now. You can put the phone down. <laughs> I think I think the two teams on the line are the Vikings. You know, just lost Kirk Cousins a little bit tough They're They're definitely, you know, wanting to go up for that J.J. McCarthy that, you know, you could sit behind Sam Donald for a year. So that that's, you know, intriguing. The Bears could trade up for a receiver. We might have them. I'm looking to do so here in a few picks. I am going to go with the Vikings to trade up. Uh, not really worried about the exact compensation. Don't know on the spot what the exact compensation would be. But I do think ultimately, you know, getting J.J. McCarthy, I personally am okay with starting him day one. I know a lot of people are not. But, I mean, I personally am totally okay starting J.J. McCarthy day one. I think he's good enough with a Kevin O'Connell type, you know, mind, um, you know, just learning and, and, you know, getting polished as he – as he goes, that's kind of his knock is polished. So he he just needs to play through it and and get those reps. And I think he's going to be a star. So I think, you know, even if you sit him behind Darnold next year, he's going to be a stud uh, with this, you know, good offense. So I think J.J. McCarthy will be a Viking, sadly, as a Broncos fan. Yeah, no, um, I 100% agree. Uh, yeah, I think you, you got two teams that are calling you. 
Uh, first and foremost is the Vikings. I think they're the most desperate team right now for a quarterback, obviously, after moving off of Kirk Cousins. And then I think the Bears, yeah, is a good second. Um, I think the Bears want in on this top wide receiver class. And, you know, at nine, I thought that, uh, you know, one at one point in time, there's probably a little bit of a pipe dream that you could get Romo Dunze at number nine. But no, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So if the Bears want a wide, a top end wide receiver, one of the elite three, looks like five is the perfect entry spot. But, you know, a quarterback needy team is probably going to be a little bit more desperate in the Vikings. And it makes sense. It makes sense. You know, um, I think Jim Harbaugh has done his best impression on selling J.J. McCarthy. Obviously, one of the going out there and saying that J.J. McCarthy should be the first overall pick. That is his prediction. So he's selling J.J. McCarthy to the Vikings. He's on the phone. He's selling him. He's 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 looking for he's looking for this year's second. He's looking for next year's first. You know, so I, I think he's going to do a good job. And yeah, I think, you know, J.J. McCarthy fits exactly what Kevin O'Connell is looking for. He can mold him into whatever he would like him to be. I think obviously the Broncos would be in contention for a trade up for McCarthy, but I don't think it's going to happen with the division rival Chargers. Yeah, and it's a brilliant move by the Chargers trading down. This this pool is so stacked. This pool of players in this draft class is just so stacked, like just doing exercises with, you know, trade downs and stuff before this. Uh, any trade down I did with the Chargers, I was just so happy with my options every single time. So, I mean, yeah, the, the top half of the first round pool in this class is like legendary stuff, a lot of elite, elite talent, blue chip guys. So, I think trading down is smart. You have a lot of options to choose from that you would honestly kind of be choosing from at five. So I, I like the Vikings making this move, though, um, going up and getting your quarterback that, you know, ideally you sit in for a year. But I personally am one of the few people that I, I'm high on JJ. I think he can, in the right situation, start day one and, and you know, do, do OK. He can excel. So I like that. I like that trade up. Don't know what you think about it. No, I love it. I think I honestly at this point from where we sit today, I think you can pretty much pencil in the Chargers trading out um, with the highest bidder. And yeah, I think it makes too much sense to be the Vikings. I think these quarterbacks are going to go fast. Quarterback is such a premium. And yeah, the Vikings are desperate. I mean, obviously, they went out and signed uh, Sam Darnold to a one year um, contract worth up to $10 million. Who knows? Maybe he'll have some kind of Baker Mayfield season. I don't know if I see that. Um, but you know, uh, the Vikings also did make some exciting, you know, news in free agency, adding running back Aaron Jones, which we called on the podcast the night before um, it happened. So you love to see it. Aaron Jones in a in a Vikings jersey is a little weird, but I'm excited for that. And for fantasy implications, if we're getting into early fantasy implications, I think he'll be an absolute stud on the Vikings. Um, and then they did. They added a. Uh, Jonathan Gernard, um, that was probably their biggest free agent signing on a four-year, $76 million contract, which really helps them. You know, I, I thought there was a big chance they could go edge at 11. Um, so Jonathan Gernard kind of seals that up. Blake Cashman, a really underrated linebacker, had a good season. Resigned Brandon Powell. Anyone else you want to talk about? I just want to talk about J.J. McCarthy, Aaron Jones, uh, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, uh, T.J. Hawkinson. I think that's really fun. That's a fun core. And, uh, yeah, like you said, you bring in um, Jonathan Grenard to replace Hunter so you don't have, you know, as many needs coming into the draft. So, yeah, I like what the Vikings are doing. I really, really love the vision. Love Kevin O'Connell, so I'm high on really anything they do. I trust it. But with that, do you want to move on to the Giants pick of six? Yeah, and I think this is who you just absolutely fleeced. Um, of J.J. McCarthy I think the Giants will honestly be in on a quarterback I I, I really do um, I think the Giants they obviously went out and signed Drew Locke they have Daniel Jones but I think they're I think they're pretty much done with Daniel Jones um, but with that being said you know it doesn't make sense for a quarterback here they are in desperate need of offensive talent and you kind of got your pick of the of the mill right here you know you can go either Malik Neighbors or Rome Odunze and this one's kind of hard for me because, you know, Romo Dunze, they're, 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 to they're two totally different players. I mean, Romo Dunze is kind of more of that bigger body, smooth receiver. And Malik Neighbors is kind of more your explosive after the catch. Um, I feel like Rome might be a little bit better in the red zone. Malik kind of has that big burst, you know, you know, score a touchdown on any touch type of play. So it's kind of like, what do you prefer? And I feel like in this situation, I feel like the Giants would prefer that bigger body guy in Romo Dunze, that true alpha wide receiver X, you know, that X guy. I feel like 
Malik Neighbors really suits best all over. I feel like he can play X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter. He can line up anywhere, slot, outside. But I feel like Rome, you're just really missing that. Just, you know, that, like you said, like when Daniel Jeremiah said, when when the whole state, when it's when it's the third down, the whole state knows where the ball is going. Who can't be card, guarded? Romo does say. And I, I feel like that's what the Giants have been lacking. It just makes too much sense to me. Yeah, when you you consider their offseason moves, their only receiver they've brought in so far is Isaiah McKenzie. You, you reunite him with uh, Brian Dable. They love their little slot, uh, small receiver. So, I mean, they also said that Isaiah Hodgins would not be returning today as well. So, yeah, it kind of does add up to bringing in that big body outside. Can't miss alpha receiver. I'm so just confident that Rome is going to be a good player in the NFL. Just very safe uh, prediction and does does Brian Burns, um, you know, costing a second round pick affect the way you you draft a six at all? Does it does it affect your decision of what position you pick at all, or not really? I mean, they do. Do they have two second round? I believe they have two second. Do they have two second rounds picks? I don't know that to be honest. Look on their trade thing. I feel like they have two second round picks, so I feel like they could be in contention um, to trade up. Yeah, they got one from Seattle for Leonard Williams. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, that's I thought I remembered. Um, but yeah, I feel like they could be in contention to trade up into the back end of the draft um, of the first round to get a to get a Penix or somebody like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know the Brian Burns. I love it. I love Brian Burns uh, at 25 years old. You're getting a true elite pass rusher to pair uh, with Kayvon Thibodeau. That's beautiful. That's awesome. Um, that that helps your defense tremendously. And I like John Runyon. Um, I like the offensive tackle, Jermaine, um, can't ever pronounce his last name. But he's Illuminor. Actually pretty, yeah, Illuminor, excuse me. Um, but I feel like he could honestly push to start over Evan Neal and he could kind of kick Evan Neal inside and you feel like your offensive line is pretty set. So, And Drew Locke's a very underrated quarterback at this point. Um, he he stepped in for Seattle and made some had some really good games. And I feel like, could, I feel like if anyone's going to have a Baker Mayfield season, it could be Drew Locke. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a take. I pushed this whole offseason that uh, Drew Locke is the best quarterback in that room physically, and he's also got the most confidence in himself, and like exudes the most like confidence in his teammates, like by around uh, him. So I, I honestly think Drew Locke's the best quarterback in that room, and I think it'll age well because DJ's probably not gonna be the Giants' quarterback in 2025. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I love the Rome pick. Anything else you want to say? Yeah, no, just um, just given how the um, the end of the draft may fall out or you know them having drew lock i could see a panics or a Knicks, but i feel like that would be something you know maybe towards the end of the draft all right and moving on to the titans at seven here i am in a little bit of a predicament malik neighbors is on the board pairing him with brian callahan first of all would be very fun they did just barely splash and pay calvin ridley a lot of money so i think you you kind of can count yourself out of receiver just because that's a lot of investment into the receiver position for a team like the titans who has a lot more needs than that stores if you're okay with it i I think i'm going to trade with myself here because you mentioned a bears trade up for a receiver malik neighbors is on the board and they're just two spots down is it cool if i trade down two spots i was gonna say something so i'm I'm very glad you just called that out because you got the falcons sitting behind you that would have no problem even though they signed darnell mooney but i think the titans are going to be on the phone so we're we're gonna we're gonna take him (laughs) we will take malik neighbors if you don't trade up right now and so I think the Bears are going to be like, okay, what do you, what do you want? We're not going to give you the house, but we're going to give you something. And yeah, I think I think it's brilliant. I I, I think the Bears trading up for this top two receiver, like we said earlier, this team is really kind of set. Their offensive line is set. Their secondary is set. Their two linebackers are very set. You've got Montez Sweat, a few you know good um, and decent interior rushers. So this team is honestly pretty good. Like I said, they really could be in the playoff push. And if you pair Caleb with neighbors with you know all the other weapons commit Everett now um saying Swift is a weapon kind of hurts not gonna lie but you know all, everyone uh, DJ Moore it's an electric electric team DJ Moore and neighbors are a fun pairing uh, just in its own they they kind of uh, bounce off each other and they uh neighbors could eventually become a better version of DJ Moore so really fun uh, I think it's a fun trade-up and I think it's something that's realistic because the Bears really don't have as many needs as you would think yeah, no, the Bears are not going to be able to. I don't. I don't care how 
you you dice it up. But if the Bears want one of these receivers, I think they'll have to get above eight. I I really do. No matter how the board falls, somebody's going to trade up. And and you know if 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 say Malik Neighbors or Rome fell to fell to um eight, somebody would trade up to eight. So I think I think going to seven or five to get yourself in the mix just makes too much sense. And like you like we yeah, like we've been saying, Ryan Poles has really built this team um, from their rebuild a couple of years ago. He's really built a good roster and that's ready to compete now. And if you pull this off, Ryan Poles, you get Caleb Williams and one of the one of the elite three. That's a uh, you know you're you're keeping your job probably for the next decade. All right, let's move on to your pick uh, for the Falcons at pick eight who. You know, they, they pretty much just made two moves, Kirk Cousins and Darnell Moody. So that, that definitely affects the way you pick here. I think, um, you know, if, if neighbors fell, maybe he was employed. But, yeah, you do have, you know, Mooney now, Van Jefferson. You kind of got that offense filled out. I'm thinking uh, it's probably the best defensive player finally off the board. But what are you thinking? You know, yeah, they have not made too much of a splash, obviously, you know, Kirk and Darnell Mooney. But yeah, you really need to focus on your defense now. I think I think your offense is actually in a really good spot, looking really pretty. Um, you got Kirk Cousins' weapons, and these these players should really be able to elevate now with a good quarterback. I feel like you know Kyle Pitts and Drake London have just been underwhelming because of the quarterback play. So I think your offense is looking awesome, and so yeah, best defensive player available. But also, I'm going a little bit for need here, and I think their biggest need they need a they need a star edge rusher, man, and so. I'm looking I'm I'm looking at Dallas Turner here at a premium position. You know, the corners are very very tempting, but I'm looking at Dallas Turner right here, my number one edge rusher on the board, a bendy freaky athlete. I think it's a home run pick. Yeah, this is what I have as well. I I think he's going to end up being the number one defensive player off the board when it's all said and done, you know. He broke out, just tore up the combine exactly how he expected and, you know, it's just a a really good prospect. He's been so good at Bama for a long time. We kind of knew he was going to be in this top 10 conversation. So I think it's a, a great pick. You can't really miss with this one. And it's also a perfect Raheem Morris guy. He gets his edge one. So perfect to build around uh, for Kirk Cousins' team. And this this Falcons team with Kirk Cousins, like it, it really can't be overstated. It, it sounds crazy, but I really think it's underrated, this, this Kirk Cousins signing at this point. Like I think people might just be underrating how – good he was last year he really was on pace to win MVP before getting hurt and his game is not uh, predicated on athleticism so he'll be totally fine coming back from the injury and you just throwing it to all of these weapons and letting them work it's going to be scary stuff I think they're legit contenders in the NFC so scary season for the Falcons uh, with that should we move on to nine yes sir yeah let's get on to your who who do you got here Dan with, with the pick you traded with yourself the Falcons, or sorry, the Titans, I think, will ultimately get somebody they wanted or would have taken at seven anyways. Exactly. This is a beautiful trade down. You decide between the best offensive lineman in the draft or Brock Bowers, and it's a tough one. Our last mock, I had Brock Bowers. I think it's it's in the realm of possibilities. It's a, it's kind of a linked, um, it just feels like a, a good fit with the Will Levis and Calvin Ridley coming in. I think I'm going to go away from that for this mock, for this exercise. And I'm going to go with the number one tackle. You pair him with arguably the best offensive line coach we've seen in a long time, Bill Callahan. And it's scary, scary stuff. You got Lloyd Cushenberry in there. You got Skaronsky in there. It's definitely um, shaping out to be a lot more competitive team for the Titans. And I'm, I'm really high on Brian Callahan as a coach. So I think this this is a home run. You trade down and get Joe Alt. You 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 have to be so happy as a Titans fan. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, Joe Alt um, is looked at in this draft um, as a prize possession. Um, teams coming out of the combine really value Joe Alt. He he seems to be just one of these no brainer type offensive line pick, and it's crazy that he's on the board here um, at number nine. This is incredible value if you're able to trade down and get Joe Alt. Um, the Titans had an absolute home run, man. It's just it's just impeccable value. Um, and just just your biggest need, you know, your your biggest need that you need to pair with, you know, an incredible offensive line coach. It's just a no, a no-brainer pick. And yeah, I mean, Connor Rogers and Trevor Sikama think Joe Walt could go as high as number four. <laughs> I mean, it might not be in play anymore, but I mean they said that. You know the Cardinals and the char and the Chargers are going to be do uh, doing their due diligence on this guy. So he, I mean, he could go as high as four or five. So the value here at number nine 
in a trade down scenario where you collect more capital is just a home run pick. And I mean, the Titans have had an interesting free agency so far. So, I mean, I, I don't know exactly how I feel about it. Um, I'll just go over, you know, some notable additions, Mason Rudolph, backup quarterback, uh, running back, Tony Pollard to pair with Tajay Spears, kind of a similar <laughs> running back of two receiving backs, uh, major fantasy implications to come in another podcast. Um, today they added wide receiver, Calvin Ridley, uh, they go get the best center in the um, in the free agency pool in Lloyd Cushenberry. They had Kenneth Murray, Chidobe Awuzie, and then um, some special teamers. Um, but yeah, what do you what do you make so far of the free agency? It's uh, one of the more interesting ones. I'm not sh- entirely sure how I how I necessarily like these fits or grade it, but it's 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 just weird. It's a, it was a weird free agency. Yeah, the Titans are exactly like the commanders to me, how they've just been kind of treating themselves like they're like contenders almost. And they're going for these these high tier guys, these veterans almost. And they're treating Will Levis like he's this proven sure thing of a quarterback. And they're they're really like going in and they're they're giving some of these guys some big contracts too. that, you know, it, it, a little bit of it's scary. So, yeah, it is interesting. I do like, you know, I like Calvin Ridley, Cushionberry. It's it's fine. I'm bringing in the I love Awuzie. I think Awuzie is the the perfect CB1 in this league. He can play in any defense, perfect uh, money and perfect value. So love that one. But yeah, just like the Tony Pollard one was just a odd one. So I don't know. And, and Calvin Ridley, that's a lot of money. I'm not, I'm not saying I love that. I, I like the idea of getting a receiver probably would have preferred a T Higgins or maybe just drafting one, but I, I like the idea of getting an, a good high tier receiver, interesting pairing with Hopkins, but yeah, I don't know. I, I like getting Joel ultimately. That, that, that's beautiful, beautiful stuff. He's my like top five player in this class. What do you make of the Tennessee Titans being a place where wide receivers go to die? It <laughs> might just be. I think Calvin Ridley might just prove that to be right. <laughs> yeah, I just have, I just have that feeling, man. I feel like you know, you got it all started with Julio Jones, who was Calvin Ridley's former teammate. And he's getting up there in age, man. So I don't know. This just, just this might prove the theory correct. So we'll see. I don't know if I love that. I felt like there would have been some better options, but ultimately you go out and get another receiver, which you're in desperate need of. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully Calvin Ridley turns out okay for the, for the Titans. All right. And let's move on to pick 10 with the Jets. They've had a pretty solid off season. Aaron Rodgers has actually done a pretty good job so far, bringing in his backup Tyrod Taylor. Uh, they traded for Morgan Moses today. You lock in that right tackle spot. Uh, you got ABT that can move there in a pinch. And then you also got John Simpson locks up another guard spot. So they're really uh, kind of solidifying the offensive line. And Isaiah Oliver uh, goes under the radar as well. So like what the Jets have done, uh, what are you going to do at 10 now? So, I mean, this is an interesting conversation for Brock Bowers right here. Um, it could be a really good fit. But I think the Jets just have one glaring hole on their offensive line, which is left tackle. And all the stars align here for Olu Fushani. And I think that just makes so, so much sense. You know, you got old aging Aaron Rodgers. You got to keep him upright. You got to keep him healthy. You get a solidified left tackle who's incredible at pass blocking. Um, and just a guy with not a lot of questions to him. So Olu Fashanu getting a little bit of prospect fatigue. I feel like I feel like in a lot of mock drafts, he's falling, you know, into the late teens. Um but with how the with how free agency has gone, I think there's there's a big conversation here for Brock Bowers, but Olu Fashano sitting here to sure up your offensive line. I think it's just I think it's a perfect pairing. Yeah, that's beautiful stuff. That's literally the last spot you need to fill out your offensive line. So now you have your full starting lineup set going into round two of the draft, and you've got a lot of flexibility on the rest of your picks going best player available. So don't even think you need to talk about that one too much. Really good pass blocking. Uh, Lyman, you know, Aaron Rodgers would love him. Uh, see a young Bakhtiari in him. So love to see that pick. Uh, want to move on to the Chargers at 11? Yeah. Dan, I'm I'm excited what you, uh, what you got cooked up here, man. We got we got who would probably, you know, we got three prospects that we'd probably have taken at five in Bowers, Quinion, and Terion Arnold. It's kind of a best case scenario for the Chargers to trade down, collect extra draft capital, and still have three guys that you're considering at five there. So you love to see it. Exactly what I was saying when I traded down. I knew that there was going to be a lot of intriguing options. This draft is just too stacked, and 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 we'll go into the Chargers offseason. Not many moves and. None of them really affect the way that they um, draft here at 11, at least. But uh, Gus Edwards, you bring in for a nice uh, kind of a steal of a contract to be that 
that power runner. I'm sure they bring in another uh, running back in the mid rounds. And then Will Disley, uh, tight end to be their blocking tight end. So it wouldn't affect Brock Bowers. And then re-signing Lohi Gilman, uh, great, great re-signing. But Brock Bowers is going to be the pick ultimately with none of the, like Joe Alts on the board. You trade down and you get Brock Bowers, who you lost. Almost, almost done. <laughs> You lost Gerald Everett today to the Bears, and you pair Brock Bowers with Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, and it's electric stuff. Uh, I think Harbaugh's going to want to – I mean, they all their signings so far have kind of indicated into that, you know, power run, that, that smash-mouth football style, um, and with Will Disley and Gus Edwards, obviously. And I, I think Brock Bowers can – you know, he can block good. He can – he's a willing blocker. But if you have Will Disley behind him, you don't even need him to block, and you can ask him to just – uh, run routes it could be a slot you can do anything in this offense and and I think it would just be so electric yeah it's just brilliant it really is and a Greg Roman offense you know where you run so many 11 heavy personnel you know where you have those two tight end sets you got Will Disley who's just your you know your proven blocker and you got Brock Bauer who's going to be one of the better route running tight ends in the in the NFL and just a, a guy who's willing to block and, and really good at everything so you know, it just it fits the scheme, the power run, the Greg Roman type of offense, you know, they're looking for. And it makes too much sense. I love it. You trade down to 11. You just made every Charger fan. It's a dream come true. Beautiful stuff from the Chargers trading down and still getting Bowers. Uh, let's move on to the Broncos pick at 12 here. Uh, they get finessed of J.J. McCarthy. What are they going to do? This is so hard for me. I mean, because, you know, so far in free agency, you know, the Broncos have been a little quiet and I don't know why. I don't know if they're, you know, their planet quarterback has gotten a little bit was was taken from them. I mean, I, I saw um, a tweet from I think it's some CBS guy. Um, you probably know who it was, but they said that the Broncos are now pivoting because their planet quarterback is now completely changed. And they're now in the mix for Justin Fields, um, which is a possibility. So the plan was Darnold. Oh, it was? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind but of they, what it felt like. Yeah. They threw him like half the contract that the Vikings threw him, so he didn't want to come there. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. So so it's interesting because it, it feels a little rich um, for a quarterback here at 12, given the Knicks and the Penix. I feel like that would be more of a trade down scenario. But this is honestly probably the hardest pick in the draft for me. Because <laughs> um, I think it, it, it damn near is. I think, man. Because, I mean, oh, my gosh. I feel like, you know. The Broncos gonna... are rebuilding, and every single need is their need. Like, they have anything is their need. So, it is hard to pick. I think they'll end up trading some. And I think they'll end up trading some stuff to collect some more draft capital. And they can trade up into the back ends for a Knicks or a Penix if they fall in love with them. Maybe they get a Spencer Rattler. Maybe they sign a Justin Fields. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go away from the quarterback here. I'm going to go with a guy that I really, really like. The Broncos just traded Jerry Judy um, to the Browns. I think I'm going to go Brian Thomas Jr. here, man. A guy, <laughs> an absolute standout. A guy who just is six foot four, ran a four three four, the third fastest time of the combine, 17 touchdowns. The Broncos struggled so much to get in the end zone last year. And this just upgrades your offense on every level. So you go get your wide receiver one in a in a draft where you know the top you know end receivers really end after Brian Thomas and then there's another tier in my opinion and you go solidify your wide receiver one for the future it's so beautiful I, i'm at a loss for words right now this is a beautiful <laughs> thing i'd so fine moving off from Sutton and Judy for you know Brian Thomas you you can replace Judy with Mims and then you can bring in like a Michael Thomas or you know, just put Tim Patrick as your wide receiver three. I love this so much. Brian Thomas, I am totally fine going here at 12. I'm totally fine with him going in the top 10 to like the Bears. I think he's that athletic of a player, really. Yeah, I think he's in combine. serious consideration at nine. If the Bears stay put, I think I think Brian Thomas Jr., we could see him go in the top 10. He's he's that kind of freakish athlete. I think he I think his RAS score is like a 9.95, some crazy dumb like that had a literally perfect combine he absolutely tore it up he ran like the fastest time relative to height since uh, dk and calvin johnson in nfl history so just a crazy freak athlete i would love it i think sean payton would love him and completely fall in love with him so i love the the big deep threat receiver um going to denver i love it yeah it's absolutely flawless it's beautiful i put a smile on dan's face with that one i, I knew i was kicking up something good in the lab right there 
I honestly was I was, I wasn't even thinking about it either. That one uh, crept up on me. I almost forgot about Brian Thomas today because PFF has him so low on our board for some reason. Trevor Sikama. Come on, Trevor. This is your job, baby. I I love it. I love and appreciate your Connor Rogers podcast. But you know, you hit me and Dan's phone, man. We'll we'll fix this mock draft simulator. We'll 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 have it up to date. Yeah, we'll, we'll update your uh, mock draft simulator that's used by everyone on earth uh, a little bit more often. But no, we'll move on to pick 13 uh, with the Raiders. They bring in Gardner Minshew, might eliminate quarterback uh, in the first round for you. Um, you, you bring in the, the big splash move in Christian Wilkins. I really loved that, just getting a superstar in here. Really, that's that was kind of really highly sought after. I think every team in the NFL probably checked up on him and, and uh, what his price was. So I think Christian Wilkins... It was a great get. Um, I, I like what the Raiders are doing. I like uh, Antonio Pierce a lot. I like that they even kept him. And I think about between like uh, Byron Murphy would be awesome here. Uh, Talise Buaga would be awesome here. You did lose Illuminor. Uh, Buaga would be awesome here. But ultimately, I am going to go with CB1. I still, I still do think that going corner, pairing him with Jack Jones is ultimately the best move, especially when you consider I have – both these top corners, Quinion and Terion, as top ten players in the draft, and I don't, I don't really want to see both of them falling too far. So I'm going to go uh, CB one in the draft. I, I do think Terion ends up going as a CB one. Could see Quinion though; they're they're both freaks in their own right. So I love this pairing uh, with with uh, Patrick Graham and, and Antonio Pierce. I think he could be a complete star day one. Yeah, I think that's a no brainer pick right there. <clears throat> Terion Arnold, absolute stud of a corner, a lockdown corner. You pair him with Jack Jones. You have you make you know you make Antonio Pierce happy. You just beef up you know the trenches. You have an insane. You have probably one of the best you know defensive lines in football. And and then you add to that secondary, and you know you make that Raiders defense scary. So I I, I absolutely love the pick. I think that's I think that's great. That's great. All right, and let's move on to the Saints pick at fourteen. They re-signed Mario Davis and Tyron Matthew, and then they bring in Willie Gay Jr. So nothing really to affect. Uh, this pick here, how are you going to go for it? I think we're going uh, to go with the good old-fashioned um, Big Ugly right here and Talise Fuaga um, just staring me right in the face. I think it's tremendous value for Talise Fuaga here um, for the Saints. Just a, just a hard-nosed, you know, brawler of a, of a tackle. And you plug him in on the right side and you got you got a, you know, you got a Pro Bowl tackle for the next 10 years. And, you know, it's, it's – the Saints are weird, man. <laughs> they're, they're weird um they're kind of in a they're they're in a very tough position um obviously with the contracts they've given out it's just you know the Derek Carr contract kind of set them behind a few years but go get a premium position start building out your premium positions through the draft and you know as you can you move off of these these big expensive players and and you start to get younger and you you start kind of a competitive rebuild if I was them I would have just ripped the band-aid off but you know they, they try and stay in this little competitive rebuild loop and it's it's interesting yeah, I, I like the pick. Would you consider Troy Fatano at left? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Troy Fatano, probably one of the most versatile guys on the board. Um, very good, you know, tackle. You can plug him in guard. You can probably play him on any position. He's he's a fantastic prospect. I think I still just I think I still have Fuaga just rated above him, and I I think you want to go get the best you know tackle. And I even think you know uh, Boltag. I think you could move. Um, Buaga to uh to to left tackle in a pinch if you needed to as well. I personally I, I do think Troy Fatano will be drafted as a tackle. So I, I would take Fatano here just because I do think he'll go like 10 to 15 uh to be a left tackle because his arms did uh check out of the combine. But we'll we'll lock in Fuaga here to be the eventual uh Ram Schick replacement. And with that, should we move on to the Colts 15? Anything else? Yes, sir. Let's move on to the Colts. And I know you got a little bit of news about the Colts that you want to predict a little early. So let's let's hear it, Dan. Yeah, so we're going to have to do a little exercise here because every single mock draft that we've ever done, my my kind of security blanket has been Quinion Mitchell right here at 15. It feels too perfect. It feels like the right area in the draft for him to go. But there there is kind of reports that Legereus Sneed has been linked to the Colts. The Colts have been heavily uh, calling on Legereus Sneed, and he's been commenting on – uh, Colts players uh, social medias as well so there are some links uh, with Ladarius need to the Colts so we're going to call our shot that that happens uh, you pair Juju Brands with Ladarius need uh, Kenny Moore you got your secondary kind of filled out I really like the that offseason so far and, and that so I got to decide what to do here at, at 15 now and 
I, I, I would like to lock in Byron Murphy, but Grover Stewart just got re-signed. So this is this is tough, man. Any 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 help? Any lifelines? Call a friend. You want to call a friend here? You know, I, I you know, even though you just signed Michael Pittman, I wouldn't think it'd be bad, you know, to go get a receiver. I would. I'm just gonna call us out. Um, Ad Mitchell here. You know, a guy with an incredible combine would be, you know, very intriguing. You could go get a bona fide edge rusher, law two verse, you know. Um, I think those would be exciting picks. Um, and hell, I mean, Jackson Bowers Johnson here, you know, with that center guard flexibility, that would be, I think, a good value pick as well. I I am almost so torn that I might just trade down because I, I genuinely don't know what the Colts would do here. Like, I think Jackson Howard Johnson could be good, but I don't even think, I don't even know if he would start day one. I guess he would start at right guard day one. Maybe Jackson Howard Johnson is the move and you start him at guard. I don't know. Yeah, no, he's played guard. Hell, you can play him at defensive tackle too. The guy's got, the guy, the guy is, uh, is offensive and defensive line position limitless, man. I mean, I don't really think he could play tackle, but interior. This is really tough. I want to. I almost just want to trade down and take Tyler Newman because it feels like a like a really good need for them. Yeah, and Julian Blackman's probably going to be gone in free agency, so exactly, which is way free. too high right here. All right, who who do we think could trade up here? I mean, we still got we still got some tackles. We got Jax Powers Johnson. We got Quinion Mitchell. I think a ooh, the Rams. The Rams could trade up. Oh, you level. know what? Yeah, either the Rams or Jags are going to trade up. Either the Rams or Jags. Um, who makes more sense to go up for that? That Quinn Young. Um, the Jags are in division, so I'm going to say Rams. All right. The LA yeah. Rams are trading up. Yeah, let's do the Rams. I think I think I love that right there. I think the Rams would love to get their star corner one kind of Jalen Ramsey that they've been missing. I think. Oof, I love it. I love it. That's that's some beautiful, beautiful stuff. The Rams really beefed up that interior, uh, bringing in Jonah Jackson and re-signing Kevin Dotson of this free agency. And then you get Quinion Mitchell to be that, you know, a few years later, the Jalen Ramsey replacement can be that lockdown CB1 top 10 corner in the league instantly. So love that trade up. That's a pretty fun uh, move. And then do you want to move on to the Seahawks pick of 16? Yeah, and I was just going to say the Rams really beefed up their interior offensive line really like what they're doing on offense over there. Um, anyone who can get their hands on Kyron uh, Williams um, this year for fantasy, he's going to be insane. They really, 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 um, you know, they've, they've gone from that, that zone scheme running scheme to that, that gap heavy and, oh man, Kyron Williams, she's going to eat. And that just makes too much sense. The Rams aren't afraid to move up. Quinion Mitchell, Jalen Ramsey replacement. I, I, I love it. I love it. It makes me excited. I love trades, man. Yeah, another fun fit that we identified. I love it. You want to move on to your uh, Seahawks at 16? This is kind of a hard one. You know, I think we're going to go, you know, I've I've considered, honestly, even going quarterback as early as 16 to them. I feel like that could make a lot of sense. But I think I just really like the fit of Troy Fatanu. Um, I think, I think Troy, I mean, I, I like Jack Spires Johnson here, but Troy Fatanu, I really think you could kick him in at guard and he'd be incredible. And you can play him as your swing tackle. I think he'd just be limitless to that already built um, Seattle offensive line. He stays in Washington. And Troy Fatano is rising up draft boards quickly, man. He is rising, rising, rising. And people, you know, have, you know, people are saying, why the hell can't he play left tackle? Well, he, well, he can. I think he can play any position. I think he plugs and plays in at guard for Seattle. And they, you know, one of their tackles gets hurt. They they have an immediate swing tackle right there. So I'm going to lock in Fatano. All right. Stores is not buying into Fatano as a left tackle. He really is not. I, I personally liked Fatano as a left tackle, but I will lock in Fatano <laughs> left tackle. I think I would take Jackson Powers Johnson, though, if I was going interior um, for the Seahawks. But anything else you want to say on that one? I think it's just really good value. And I, I think... I think Fatano could play center. I think I I I don't think he can't play left tackle. I think he's I think he's position limitless on the line. So I think that just adds a different aspect and dynamic. And I, I feel like Jack Spires Johnson is such a safe pick. I kind of want to go in a different direction. All right. Lock in Troy Fatanu, uh solidify three spots on that offensive line for the Seahawks. And we'll go on to the Jaguars pick at 17. Uh Brian Thomas is someone that you'd like to lock in here but after bringing in Gabe Davis which was an interesting move to replace Calvin Ridley by the way 
paid a lot of money as well. I, what, what are your thoughts on Gabe Davis, first of all, for $36 million? Congratulations to Gabe Davis. You just uh, <laughs> you just got away with a uh, robbery. Um, <laughs> it's just Gabe Davis, man, one of the most – one of the most frustrating wide receivers in NFL history, honestly. This guy falls asleep at the wheel for five weeks and then goes for 300 yards. He's the most unpredictable player in uh, in league history. But, yeah, I don't I don't think I like that bag. Um, I like that they don't have to give up a pick now for Calvin Ridley, obviously, um, which gives them more flexibility in the draft. But, yeah, I <laughs> it's just – it's kind of laughable to me. Gabe Davis, you got away with murder, kid. Davis is just finessing teams. That that's his career arc at this point to be Marcus Valdez Scantling. So didn't love the rest of the Jaguars moves as well. I would say the Jaguars are probably had the worst offseason in NFL history. Just being completely honest, it's pretty <laughs> terrible. Every single move they made has been pretty bad. I'm just gonna be honest. Let's, but. let's just name it. You got <laughs> Mac Jones. You got Gabe Davis, D. Ernest Johnson, Devin Duvernay, Ezra Cleveland, Mitch Morse. Ronald Darby, Darnell Savage. It's Don't forget like, Blake Hands. <laughs> Blake, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's just it's memeable, man. And they spent a shit ton of money. I mean, they could have done some real damage, and they spent a lot of money. They gave it a lot of bags for just almost like every single player on this list is like lower tier mid. Like this is the all time mid free agency, and they spent bags on almost every single one of them. Yeah, Trent Balky is is just terrible. Um, terrible stuff. So I, I'll pick for the Jaguars and I'm going to try to do it. Bulky uh, wouldn't do. And you know what? Looking at it right now, that that Jaguars interior defensive line is terrible. They've got Devon Hamilton, Adam Gotsis. That's it. And I, I was going to lock in Nate Wiggins here. I really do think after losing Darius Williams, they would go corner, but I'll, I'll say they add a, a good veteran corner um, to pair up with Tyson Campbell. I'm going to go Byron Murphy. It feels like a fun fit with the Jags. They're really hurting on the interior you've got you know some potential on the edge um on the outside with josh on and trayvon walker so yeah i, I like byron murphy to the to the jacks he's honestly my favorite defensive player in this class i love him so much top 10 player in this draft for me i think he really has like chris jones type upside so taking the first defensive interior off the board yeah that's damn near brilliant i haven't even thought of that once and obviously at this position that is um, incredible value there. So I'm not going to argue it. This guy's a freak of an athlete. Incredible season at Texas. Yeah. So no brainer pick there. I didn't even I didn't even think about that. But that's 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 damn near brilliant. Beautiful stuff. With that we'll we'll go on to the Bengals pick at 18 and some live news on the pod. I didn't want to say it live because it wasn't anything crazy. But Makai Becton is going to to interview or yeah just visit with the the Bengals so what are your thoughts on that is Mekhi Becton the answer at right tackle or what are they thinking is he just going to be Orlando Brown's contingency plan or I mean surely Mekhi isn't going to start for them. yeah that's interesting I'm, I'm reading the news right now free agent offensive tackle Mekhi Becton has a visit scheduled with the Bengals for tomorrow I don't know <laughs> I don't know. I like Joe Burrow standing upright I don't like that <laughs> Uh, I mean, they just lose Jonah Williams. Um, and do they do they value Makai? I mean, I feel like he's gonna get somewhat of a bag. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I don't feel like that really prevents me from wanting to take a tackle. I you know, think just for the sake of the pod, you know, they like they like Joe Burrow. Okay, for the sake of the pod, the Bengals like to hurt Joe Burrow. <laughs> it's just in their DNA. So. They need a tight end. And I there's one, I think there's one guy left on the board before there's a significant drop off. So if they want to go get him, give me Jatavion Sanders, man. He tested great at the combine. He's a really underrated player. I feel like, you know, it's it's Brock Bowers one and then, you know, a little bit below. But I, I feel like I have a first round grade on Jatavion Sanders. I feel like he's a really, really good receiving, but um, receiving tight end and a very underrated blocker and a pretty big dude who's you know I mean he's not massive he's not your Gronk size but he's pretty solid he's built like an absolute freaking missile man and pairing him with Joe Burrow would be fun you know you retain T Higgins um, obviously you just lost Joe Mixon it's too early for a running back you don't care about keeping Joe Burrow healthy so give me give me the shiny toy man give me Tavion Sanders a really fun electric wide receiver um, type tight end 
Yeah, it's interesting. You definitely uh, don't see this often. You, you, I actually have seen this fit a lot in the second round. Um, so it is interesting uh, value. I, I I could see it, though. I could see Jatavian being pushed up boards because there's really no other tight ends after him and Bowers. So it's a big, it's a big huge drop, drop off, man. It's it's a, it's probably the biggest like tight end drop off we've seen. It's 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 big. There's a there's a big gap between Jatavian Sanders and Kate Stover, who's probably like the third. Well, I'll say it like this tight end class is honestly horrible. Like, I don't think anyone's actually went out and said it, but it's honestly a pretty bad tight end class. Like the rest of the positions are all insanely stacked, but this tight end class is pretty horrible. Uh, the Bengals, though, you bring in Zach Moss, uh, you bring in Mike Kosicki, you're probably going to lose T Higgins. He requested that trade, but I yeah, guess they like, did bring in two tight ends, Drew Sample and Mike Kosicki. So, or they re-signed Drew Sample, excuse me, but... I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, just for the sake of being different, because I don't want to do the same thing every time. Just, just give me the kid. Just give me the kid. Don't think about it. We could probably do a trade down and still get him. But give me the kid right now. I haven't locked it in if you want to just take a right tackle. Or I don't know. It's up to you. Kai Becton signs. Nah, let's just let's put for, for the sake of the for the sake of the mock. Why not? Why not? I know, I know the value is not great there, but I, mean, I don't know. I don't really have him graded too much below like a Michael Mayer or a Dalton Kincaid, honestly, in my opinion. Um, I think he had been right there with those guys last year. And, you know, Dalton Kincaid went like 23. So I don't think it's terrible value. Um, and if you want it, to, if you want one of the top two tight ends, I mean, you're going to have to take Jatavion. I think, I think he'll go early, early day two. I'm not that high on Jatavion. I would not compare him to Kincaid, but yeah, I do like that athleticism, and he's a fun player. And with that, do you want to move on to pick 19 with the Colts after trading down? Yes. Um, it's all you, Dan. I, I just absolutely shook you. Dan's got to Dan's got to hit a home run out of the park for the for the stores. It's crazy. Pick at nine or at 18. So Colts are getting yeah. finessed of Jatavion Sanders and Byron Murphy, two Texas players, uh, getting absolutely finessed of Sanders. So with that, after trading down, um. In this scenario, you have Legereus Sneed on your roster. So this is still just very tough. Like, is it just too bold going to Tavion Sanders and then Tyler Newbin, um, the next pick? I, I really do think Tyler Newbin just feels like a glove fit for the Colts. Maybe you get Cooper DeGene, play him at safety. Um, Chris Ballard, man. It's Chris Ballard. Chris Ballard drafts weird people. You got to remember that. This is true. This is true. You're giving me more confidence to – it was that edge rusher they took in like the second round like a couple of years ago. Oh, Adeo uh, Adenabo or yeah. whatever. <laughs> we, have a, we have a buddy that's a Colts fan that thought that guy was the next freaking like JPP or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> All Colts fans think that of every pick ever. But um, yeah, you know, like you said, Ballard loves his RES freaks. Um Really struggling too early for Tyler Newbin. I think there's a big drop off after Tyler Newbin at safety. Honestly, I think it's Tyler Newbin, and then you go all the way down here to like Cam Kitchens. Yeah, I'm just gonna identify the fit because it feels like a perfect fit for the Colts scheme and what they need. Like roster wise, they are gonna lose Blackman. They, they need that free safety, free safety, and Newbin such a shifty, good mover, rangy um, safety. I love him as a free safety. So yeah, I'll lock in Tyler Newbin at 19. Bold. Probably haven't seen it anywhere, but I, I like the fit a lot. All right, Dan. So now we're losing our credibility going to Tavion and Tyler <laughs> Newbin and back-to-back picks. Stay with us, folks. We're, <laughs> we're we're drumming up something really crazy. So just just stay with us. Here come the comments. But with that, do you want to move on to the Steelers <laughs> at 20? We're gonna get absolutely ridiculed in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> back to back pick. Oh god. Uh, so the Steelers, anyways, uh, moving off of Deontay Johnson um, and bringing in Deontay Jackson um, in a pick swap and a player swap. So that's interesting. Um, they could honestly be in play for a wide receiver here. Uh, they bring in Patrick Queen. Obviously, go get Russell Wilson. So I think you know, obviously, quarterbacks off the board here. Um, they solidified one of their biggest needs in linebacker, but Jackson Powers Johnson is here right now, right now, man. And that is a, that is a no brainer pick for me. Jackson Powers Johnson at 20 <laughs> with a Mike Tomlin offense. Oh man. He, he fits into that mean nitty gritty steel towel type mentality. Easy lock, easy lock. Jackson Powers Johnson, tremendous value here for the Steelers. You'll love to see it. That's so beautiful. A uh, big need on that Steelers line is really just any offensive line, and you lock in that center of the future. I really think 
Uh, JPJ is a top 20 player in this class, a surefire, like next decade uh, pro bowler at center. He's really that type of guy. He reminds me of Jason Kelsey with the way he plays, the way he moves, his football IQ. He, he's just that guy. I, I really love Jackson Tyler Johnson as a center. He also completely finessed the Dolphins at 21 as well. Oh, 100%. And I would not hate wide receiver at 20 either for the Steelers, obviously, after moving off of um, Deontay Johnson. But Ultimately, I think the offensive line drop-off is m a lot more substantial than the wide receiver drop-off, and the Steelers are, are known to find those day two, day three gems. All right, and then moving on to the Dolphins at 21. I'm deciding between two people right here, Graham Barton, who's really the, my best interior offensive lineman available right now, or Johnny Newton, uh, defensive interior. You lost Christian, Christian Wilkins to the Raiders. I think for that sake, you – you know, you you didn't really bring in anyone to replace him. I'm going to bring in Johnny Newton, who's just a beast. He's they did bring in Neville Gallimore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's they lost they lost Raekwon Davis as well, so they will. Oh have to yeah. Win too. They've had a crazy. Excuse me. They've had a crazy free They've lost a lot of guys, but they've also been very active. So yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, Robert Jones, Johnny Smith, Aaron Brewer, Neville Gallimore, Shaq Barrett, Jordan Brooks, Anthony Walker, Nick Need Need him. Um, Jordan Poyer. So yeah, they've been they've been fairly busy, but I I love Johnny Newton. I, I I don't understand the um the hate and why he's been falling in so many mock drafts. So I I do love that fit. Yeah, he's he had that ninety one point five grade in twenty twenty two, and he's he's really just been here, uh, kind of getting that prospect fatigue. And yeah, he's such a stud. I think he he fits that uh, Weaver defense well, and you can move him around. And yeah, I really like Johnny Newton to the Dolphins. I think it's a fun one and. You did lose Raekwon Davis and Christian Wilkins, so I'll go with that one. I haven't seen that one before. Yeah, um, I love it. I think that's a great fit. And then I think, you know, in the later rounds, you probably start attacking offensive line a little bit more if you're the Dolphins. But interesting. Um, I don't think you'll honestly be competitive until you move off of Tua. Um, but, you know, that's a, that's a my take right there. I 100% agree. We could <laughs> spend a whole three podcasts talking about Tua and, and why the Dolphins should move on right now. But – with that, let's move on to the Eagles pick at 22. You bring in Saquon Barkley. Really all you need to talk about, that's electric stuff. And, and you're, you're going to be good next year. You're going to be competitive because Saquon behind that offensive line, that's pretty scary. Yeah, and I think the draft plan stays the same for the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, you got to get secondary help. And you got Cooper DeSheen, Nate Wiggins on the board right here. I think it's kind of pick your poison with who you like. Um and I think I did this last time, and I think I'm going to stick to the same thing. I like Cooper's gene, man. I, I like the position flexibility. Um, I like that he can kind of play anywhere on this um, on this defense with um, Big Fangio, kind of be that kind of chess piece for Fangio. And I think Cooper Gene fits that mold. You know, Fangio could use him just as a total king's piece on the chessboard, man. I mean, he can play nickel. He can play slot. He can play outside. He can play safety. Um, and, you know, I just it's really it's a really a bummer that he's had this foot. He's been nursing a foot injury because, you know, if he would have tested, he would have tested off the charts. And, you know, I think really rose his draft stock. Yeah, that defense really struggled last year was kind of the downfall. So you bring in Cooper to Gene, CJ Gardner Johnson, you bring in Bryce Huff, really good signing um, as an edge rusher who's going to be a stud for the Eagles. So, yeah, I really like that. We kind of lock in corner to the Eagles every time there actually have been links with the Eagles and to Gene. I actually think that. There was a report, don't know how reliable it is, that the Eagles were the only team that interviewed DeGene for a first-round grade. So that was interesting as well. So anything else you want to say on that? No, it's just Eagles lock in a corner, pick your poison. But, yeah, Cooper DeGene, just the the flexibility and and the player he is, just is, is super um, super exciting. I, I really like the player. All right, and let's move on to the Texans at 23, who have had an electric, electric offseason, bringing in Joe Mixon, getting a – Another great weapon in there, uh, resounding Dalton Schultz. Uh, and then you you bring in the big name, Dan Daniel Hunter, um, absolutely stud uh, edge rusher who's been balling for years now, insanely productive. You bring in Aziz Alshair, uh, D'Amico Ryan's a guy. So a lot of fun moves. Don't really have much needs on this team. It's a lot. Of, it's very stacked, too. This team is honestly deep. It, it's been Casario's done a great job building it, and uh, it, it's a fun roster. I'm kind of deciding between a few people right now. Uh, Nate Wiggins would be awesome. I do think, you know, going A.D. Mitchell, getting a receiver would be honestly <laughs> ideal here because they haven't really brought in a receiver yet. But what are you thinking? I think that's, I think that's awesome. 
I think the Texans are ready to, they're ready. They're, they're ready to compete deep playoffs. I mean, just what they've done so far is just damn near brilliant. Daniil Hunter, Shair, Lonnie Johnson, Desmond King re-signing, bringing in Jeff Okuda, who I think is just going to have an absolute career resurgence. Danico Autry, who had quietly 10 sacks last season, and bringing in Joe Mixon, who you just really lacked at a star running back. And Joe Mixon is just going to fit into that scheme so flawlessly. I just love what Casario and D'Amico Ryans are building over there, man. I, I think they're going to be one of the most competitive teams in the in the AFC. Yeah, I definitely am uh, deciding between Nate Wiggins and A.D. Mitchell. This is really, really tough, honestly. But the Texans did bring in Desmond King, Lonnie Johnson, and Jeff Okuda, a few, you know, secondary players that D'Amico Ryans is known for elevating those secondary players. And the Texans did maybe miss on some receivers that they were trying to swing for. So with that, we'll, we'll bring in A.D. Mitchell, who has that C.D. Lamb, A.J. Brown potential. He might be the last receiver in the draft available right now that has that real, real, like, 95 overall and Madden potential. He can really be that guy and, and be a huge alpha. So pairing him with C.J. in this situation, kind of being the last piece of a perfect offense, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, and like you said, I don't – think people realize how deep the Texans roster is it's built so the meat and potatoes of the roster is just incredible man they've built this thing so well I mean just think of their receiving room I mean we're talking about they they really have the the ability to go best player available and and get their shiny you know new Ferrari I mean you have they re-signed Noah Brown you have Tank Dell who's one of the better you know wide receivers last year before he got hurt I mean he could have been honestly offensive rookie um of the year type potential behind C.J. Stroud. Um, but yeah, he was an incredible receiver. Nico Collins just had an absolute breakout year. And then you add an A.D. Mitchell to the fold. Yeah, C.J. Stroud is in a is in a really good position to get a Super Bowl early in his career. You can lock that in. You can lock three out of the next five if this happens. And I mean, honestly, even if it doesn't happen, because this Texans team is perfect and they're being built perfectly. And yeah, you you pair uh, Will Anderson with Daniel, Daniel Hunter, takes out I, Ed. I'm going to call my shot, man. The Texans will be in the AFC Championship game this year. They they they're that they're that good. They are they are AFC Championship contenders right now as it sits. They are one of the best teams in all the NFL and will be in the AFC Championship game next year. I'm going to call my shot on that right now. You're not going to hear an argument from me. I hope you I hope you stick to that all offseason cuz I like that take. So I hope you 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 stick with your gut there. But let's go to the Cowboys at 24. Uh, what are you going to do? We get um can you read their free agency additions to me? Um I don't have it pulled up right here. Yeah, let me let me read you the long list of free agents <laughs> for the Cowboys stores. Trent C <laughs> and 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 uh oh oh and they finessed Eric Kendricks from Brandon Staley's 49ers. <laughs> they got a long snapper though, at least. Resign them. Locked them up. Uh I said that one for a freaking grand slam out of the park, baby. The Cowboys have been very active in free agency so far. Their fans are pulling out their hair. They're absolutely pissed. Um, with that being said, you know, you know, I, I the Cowboys' identity is offensive line. I think uh, Tyrone Smith is a, for sure a lock to be gone. And, oh, man, I didn't realize J.C. Latham is still on the board here. That's tough. J.C. Latham or Amarius Mims. It's your pick at right tackle. It's tough. Oh, J.C. Latham there, the value is damn near perfect, and he is an absolute monster. I'm going to go J.C. Latham. That's that's less of a question mark, a lot more tape in the SEC. Just an absolute run mauler. Yeah, that's that's incredible. I would have gone, I would have gone Mims if Latham wasn't there, but wow, that's a that's kind of a dream scenario, honestly, for the Cowboys. Latham damn near might be a might be a freaking hall of famer if he goes there yeah I, I was gonna lock in mims or uh latham as well absolutely perfect pick you replace terrence still who's kind of been struggling and you you just keep building on your strength and you you keep stacking off in the blind not much to say on it. it's just perfect uh anything else no no let's move on to the packers who have had an incredible off season too so far in free agency the first wave yeah, let's read off the the Green Bay Packers offseason who, you know, people may have thought were, were going to be quiet. The youngest team in the NFL coming off a really good season. Maybe they were just content and, and going to stay put. No, they they cut Aaron Jones, replaced him with Josh Jacobs, one of the best, maybe the best pure running back in the NFL. 
people don't even talk about that. Something that went really under the radar. They re-signed their really good slot uh, slot corner slash really good returner, uh, Keyshawn Nixon. And then they bring in big name safety, Xavier McKinney, the best in my opinion, the best safety uh, relative to age available on the market on the big deal. They kind of finessed him over from the Eagles. So yeah, fun, fun off season for the Packers. You really had one need and that was replacing Darnell Savage heading into this off season. So you've got a lot of options here. I know what I'm doing. I'm taking Nate Wiggins. He shouldn't be here. He he ran that 4-2-8, may have got hurt doing it. Probably could have ran a 4-2-2, literally, um, if he didn't get hurt running that. So he, he's a freak, he needs to fill out, needs to gain some weight, needs to, I'm a little bit scared of him, like, pressing at the next level, but I, I do love Nate, I love his film at ACC, and he is a freak athlete, a lot of upside, just needs to stay healthy and, and fill himself out. Yeah, I mean, the rich get richer, man. That's just the story of this, the rich get richer, and I absolutely love the Fizz, damn near perfect. You know, you also resign Corey Ballantyne and Keyshawn Nixon, just underrated, good depth players. You go get a star corner, Nate Wiggins, Xavier McKinney. That secondary is completely revamped. And, you know, that was your biggest weakness, and you just you just solved it already. So I love that. And for fantasy managers out there, man, Josh Jacobs is going to be good. I think, I think he's going to be really, really good on the Packers. So keep an eye out for that. More content to come on that, of course. But I'm going to throw that, an early tease out there right now. That whole Packers offense is going to be incredible. They, Josh Jacobs are just the perfect situation for it. It's going to be beautiful, just like the Texans. You can expect them to be right there in the thick of things in the NFC Championship, honestly. But with that, let's move on to the Buccaneers at pick 26. This is interesting because Jared Verse and Lots, who are both still available, the edges are falling in our mock. Chopper Robinson as well. And your offseason, you bring it, you bring back uh, Mike Evans and Baker Mayfield and Antoine Winfield don't even know how you bring back like three top 10 free agents in this class, but you love to see that. And then, um, you know, kind of smaller moves. You, you, they also brought back Levante David. Wow. They brought back a lot of good free agents, but then they, they, they did trade um, Carlton Davis. Yes. To the that could yes. also, I mean, the edge rusher is definitely a premium here. Uh, who are our best corners? Oh my God. I know what I'm going to do. So you lost out on Shaq Barrett as well. So you will need to either go edge or corner for sure. You know, I think you know what I'm going to do here. I don't know what you're going to do. Give me TJ Tampa. <laughs> going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, man. Replacing Carlton Davis. Um, I think they can find an edge rusher in the second round. This guy is a true alpha outside corner. 6'1", 200 pounds. Legit speed. You know, this guy can can press you and man. He, he's also going to drop back. He's an incredibly smart corner. He can play zone at an elite level. Yeah. Um, TJ Tampa, a Florida kid, going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You love to see it. You love the fit. You love the name. You know, let, let's get it. Yeah. Love TJ Tampa, the prospect. I'm positive that you and I are higher on him than really anywhere you guys will see. Uh, we both had him as top eight. Uh, corners in our cornerback ranking episode if you haven't seen that yet and yeah love the fit it's it's fun you you lose Carlton Davis he actually kind of is a similar player to Carlton Davis as well so I do like that um, let's move on to the Cardinals at 27 you get a pick between these edge rushers Jared Verse and Latu at 27 you get Marvin Harrison at four awesome Jonathan Gannon is, is freaking doing behind the back freaking jump into the pool man he's he's back flipping into the pool yeah, Austin Fort is sprinting uh, up to the podium, just whoever uh, Gannon likes more. I personally am just a little bit higher in Latsu. I, I think he's just too clean of a prospect. He's kind of borderline a perfect prospect, and, and he's falling for no reason. So I don't like that we have him this low. I, I got to get him off the board. Uh, he's, he's been like the highest graded pass rusher um, in all of college football the last two years, and he's just a, a really clean, dominant player. He has all the tools in his tool bag, and yeah, I, I like you um, pairing him with the Cardinals who need a lot of help on defense. Yeah, that's that's just a plus draft coming out of day one for the Cardinals. They just they just killed it right there. Um, the Buffalo Bills um, losing Gabe Davis in free agency, signing Mitchell Trubisky, um, agreed to terms with Deion Dawkins, David Edwards. They re-signed AJ Epinesa. Um, they get Nicholas Moreau. Um, they re-signed Taylor Rapp, Cam Lewis. So not a lot going on, a lot of cuts. But 
Dan, there's a guy that I've just I've really grown to love, man. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a wide receiver. It's um it's a guy that I've just he's out of Florida, man. He's, <laughs> he's elite talent. I don't know if it's too early for it, but I just I really really like Ricky Pearsall, who just absolutely killed the combine. Has some of the cleanest hands in the draft. Is an elite catcher in traffic. Had probably the catch of the year one-handed in between two players while he's absolutely just gets torn up over the middle. Yeah. I don't know this, this Ricky Pierce all guy, man, he he's legit. He's, he's an incredible route runner. He's got pretty good size to him. What what do you think? What do you think if I go with this? I mean, like I'll, I'll allow it. It's, it's electric. He's definitely rising at boards. He's played this off season process perfectly. He really rose the stock of the senior bowl and then balled at the combine. He's, catching eyes i know for a fact that one-handed catch rose him up your draft board like at least 20 spots though right oh 100 100 percent. yeah i saw that it was over it was over <laughs> it was that was an automatic first round grade i don't think i've ever seen anything as great as that in my life i, I like the fit too like with with josh allen it, it fits the bill's current receiving core like if you were to to kind of go with uh kilo shakir and um stefan diggs who i mean we don't even know if stefan diggs will be there i do I like hate- Honestly, sorry to cut you off there, but I don't hate Keon Coleman here either. I think he's a big physical freak um, who would pair very well with Josh Allen, too. I'm kind of torn between those two. Yeah, even Xavier Worthy, just a crazy speedy deep threat. There's definitely options um, that you could go. But I, I don't mind Pearsall. I think he, he it's not outside of the realm of possibilities. It could definitely happen, and he's worthy of going this high. He's probably the second-best route runner in this whole class behind Lab McConkey. so I don't know. I don't know what to do here. I might call a friend on this. Um, what do you think? I, I'm a little stuck. Um, I don't hate going. I wouldn't hate going offensive tackle. Braden like, Fisk is another guy I'd really love to see on that interior line who I think has shot up boards substantially. Maybe I even want to trade out of this pick, man. I don't but know. we really need a receiver. Oh, I would have loved to have AD Mitchell here, but. Jared Verse is tremendous value. Vaughn Miller's super old. Um, I don't know. What what are we thinking, Dan? I, I, I'm phoning a friend here. What are we? What are, I was what are fine you... with Pearsall, but I don't know. I think you, I'm literally fine with Edge because I mean, you 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 kind of have to eventually go Edge. You lost Leonard Floyd, so I'm totally fine with Edge. Um, I mean, Jared Verse, the value is kind of unmatched. You know, let's just go Jared Verse. He's the best player on the board. Maybe we don't love any receivers here. We wait till day two, day three. Maybe we sign, you know, Mike Williams in free agency if we can afford him. Um, But, yeah, Jared Verse, man, a true bendy guy. I think he would pair very well learning from Von Miller. I think that would be a good stepping stone into overtaking him. Um, you know, a very twitchy athletic guy. So yeah, you know, this, this is too good a value here to really pass up on him. Yeah. And he's been so solid at Florida state for a while. He definitely has a high floor. I, I like, uh, I feel like this is too low for him. So I like that pick. It feels like, um, the perfect spot for him. He would be a stud in this spot. I think him and, um, Greg, Gregory Rousseau, I'm it's a little late, but Gregory Rousseau would be a great pairing. Um, anything else on, on pick 28? No, no, let's move on. Uh, I may, I may be trading up if we in the next two round mock to if we if we do this to get a get a Keon Coleman or something. Yeah, definitely fair. Uh, Bo Nix is in the realm. Like someone could be calling uh, to trade up for Bo Nix right here too. So we could monitor that as we're picking. Um, for the Lions, you you do bring back uh, Graham Glasgow, so that is big. But you lose Jonah Jackson, so you you could you know bring in Graham Barton to start at center. Uh, or guard, obviously, with Ragnar there, so probably guard. Um, you bring in Carlton Davis, so you you could eliminate the need at corner. It depends on what they do with Sutton. I could see them cutting Sutton, but I, I don't mind Sutton as a CB2 opposite of Davis. I just hated him as a CB1, getting toasted by the wide receiver one every week. But opposite of Carlton Davis, I actually don't mind it. So, And you also bring in Marcus Davenport. I actually really like that signing. That was a huge value signing. I think it, you could almost eliminate Edge. You got Amik Robinson, uh, Robertson too, and Emmanuel, or the re-signed Emmanuel Mosey. And Amik Robinson, that's kind of a good slot corner right there too for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So this this pick is hard. I, I think I am going to stick and pick though, ultimately. And I am between Graham Bart and Chop Robinson. 
this is hard. It's either a starting guard or a, a more rotational edge because you do have Marcus Davenport. I'm just going to throw a dangle of carrot in front of you. Think about Braden Fisk here. I, I just don't love Braden Fisk as a prospect as much as a lot of people do. I, I He did kill the combine and he moves like crazy, but I was watching some more like actual tape of him and I just, I didn't fuck around much. I, I don't even. I don't even like that. I, I think I think he's risen up a little too much. I mean, he is getting like a borderline and a first round hype, which I feel like more comfortable day two, day three, or for, sorry, second round, third round pick for him. Yeah, I, I can't remember where Fisk transferred from. It was like Kansas or somewhere, but he transferred from somewhere small and he wasn't getting any playing time from there. So I don't know. There's some red flags there. I don't think I would take him there. I am still torn between. Sam Barton would be intriguing here. Yeah, you did lose Jonah Jackson, uh, Pro Bowl guard. I am going to take Graham Barton. Uh, Graham Glasgow's uh, older as well. So I like the fit of Graham Barton. Just seems like a lion. And, you know, you, you plug him in to start a guard. He's probably going to be an all pro for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, honestly, there he was taking snaps at center um, at the combine, too. So I, I think he has that flexibility as well. Baltimore Ravens, uh, biggest free agent ad was Derrick Henry, who we also called on the pod. Um, Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson, Dan, what do you, what do you, what do you make of that? What do you make of Derrick Henry behind a, you know, a competent offensive line and in a, in a really run first team? Hot take from Dan right now, this Derrick Henry for two years, $16 million deal is the biggest value signing in in NFL history. I I really think it's going to end up as the biggest value free agent signing ever because you are getting Derrick Henry to insert next to Lamar Jackson behind the Ravens run game and run blocking for 8 million a year. And you, he, Derek Henry had a fine season against or behind the worst offensive line in the league last year. And I just feel like the floor here is just incredibly, incredibly high. He's going to have a really good season, even if he doesn't even finish the season healthy. Like it's, it's just a great signing. And I, I, I just love that. I wanted to get that ran out of the way. I, I love what the Ravens are doing, as always. But I, I do want to say they traded away Morgan Moses today. So tackle, right tackle. It's kind of – this pick is a little – Lock it up, Iris Mims, man. <laughs> Come on. You just get you just get even scarier in the run game with this. We all know where we were going. You're lying to Marius Mims, Lamar Jackson, and Derrick Henry, and you're probably the scariest team in the entire league. That's just an incredible fit. And just, you know, just a solid, solid tackle with just, you know, if you plug him into the Ravens scheme, he can probably hit his max potential and he could probably, you know, prosper into something great. I know there's not a lot of tape on the guy, but you're really banking off of that athleticism and the traits there and the few, you know, the few, few game tapes you have. But I mean, they were brilliant. He he really dominated in, in the few games he played. So, you know, a guy that... um Excuse me, the offensive coordinator for the Ravens. I blanked his name is going to be very familiar with. Um Monken. Yeah, Todd Monken. Um, you know, former Georgia guy. I think he's got his connections there. I think and the Ravens, man, like we always say, they're they're getting steals. No matter what in the draft, they're finding they're finding a value and they're finding a steal. And Amarius Mims here at, at pick 30 is is brilliant. Yeah, it might be the steal of the first round in this scenario. Uh I, a lot of people following that, you know, we don't even want to follow. It's just how the draft is kind of played out because I'm very high on Amarius Mims in this Raven situation. He would be a all pro guard. I think he's a better prospect than Orlando Brown was coming out as a right tackle. And he's got all the potential in the world. He's the craziest uh, freak athlete at tackle that we've seen in this class. He's chiseled by gods to be an offensive lineman. So love that pick. We'll move on to the Niners at 31. Haven't had the flashiest off season, pretty much just bringing in uh, Leonard Floyd and Yer Gross Matos, who, by the way, that was a I, I hated that signing a two year, $18 million deal for either gross Matos, by the way, was the exact same price of Derrick Henry. So just tells you the the market of the NFL it is crazy because year gross Matos has been terrible for the Panthers. As somebody who's been watching a lot of that Panthers defensive line lately, gross Matos is just not good. He's coming off a terrible season. So that's a lot of money for him. Just wanted to get that round of the way. I feel like the Niners. I'm pissed they didn't trade for Joey Bosa, man. It really, it really pisses me off. We all, we all wanted to see it. They didn't make it happen. They go sign Matos and a bunch of random other people. I don't know. They had a, they had a weird off season. It was a lot of moves going on. And why not just go get Bosa? Why not pair the Bosa brothers together? We all want to see it. And you know, they didn't, they didn't, they obviously didn't call and they couldn't get anything done. So it's, it's, it's annoying. 
Yeah, replacing Chase Young even for like Leonard Floyd is honestly gross. So I, I didn't like it. Uh, upgrading would have been nice or Bosa. You know, a lot of these contending teams are making these splash plays, and the Niners are are not. They they re-signed Colton McKivitz, who is literally. I think I'm not going to take um, Tyler Guyton right here, the high upside tackle, just because of that re-signing, which is another move that I hated. I think re-signing Colton McKivitz is terrible. Is he's not a good right tackle. Well, in McHistory, though, in this, that's a good fit. That's yeah, a good fit. It's like sure, it's like sure, various Ward 2.0 right there. Yep, I'm deciding between Kool Aid and Chop Robinson right now. With you bringing in Leonard Floyd and Gross Matos, I do ultimately have to go Kool Aid though. And you know, with the Niners, you you can just see it right now. You can see him in the Niners uniform. You can see him contributing in in big games and and the playoffs, and even just being a good corner opposite of Shervarius Ward. I, I love it. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Plug him into that 49ers defensive scheme. He's just – he's going to fit flawlessly in there. That's that's a no-brainer. All right, you want to move on to the Super Bowl champion Chiefs? Yeah, I honestly think this one could be up for, for sale, honestly, for a team that's wanting to move in for a quarterback. Um, I would not be surprised if the Chiefs moved out of this spot or even moved up in the draft. Um, but with that being said, you know – Let's go. For, let's see, who's our top wide receivers available right now. Chiefs have been pretty inactive. They've they've re-signed a lot of their own guys. Um, pretty sure they got Irv Smith Jr. at tight end. But mm, who's the best fit for the Chiefs here? You know, I, I love the thought of Xavier Worthy, but man, Roman Wilson, big. He's bigger. I think he's got stronger hands. He's a senior bowl standout. I like that. Jalen Polk is also intriguing here. It was a really love good Jalen Polk. I love, I think like for the Chiefs specifically, I guess it depends on what they do. They could totally go like Mike Williams. I think Keon Coleman could be a shout if they wanted that outside perimeter guy. It would be him. Or if they wanted that slot, you know, Puka guy, I'd be lad. I think I would be between those two. But Roman, you know, just running away from people would be electric as well. Yeah. Uh, you could you could call your shot with Pearsall too. I, I could see Pearsall like kind of a mix of of everyone really. So it would be good here. I would think I'm going to go Keon Coleman. Um, depending whether they sign Mike Williams or not, that's still to be determined in the next few days. But Keon Coleman, big physical guy who's got really good game speed. I mean, just a big physical presence that would just be dominant with Patrick Mahomes. You just throw it up to this guy. Um, his contested catch rate is not the best. Um. But he's just he's such a solid receiver and, and him 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 running that gauntlet drill at the at the combine at 20 miles per hour was pretty ridiculous on a straight line. It was it was pretty damn near perfect. Yeah, he's a good athlete. He didn't test out well, but yeah, like you said, when he just is on the kind field. reminds me of Nico Collins. Yeah. You know, kind of that's kind of my comp for him is Nico Collins. Which is a very actually, good That's actually a pretty good comp. Like no one really um was really regarding Nico too highly coming out and he ended up being a second round pick and in you know, he, he that you know you develop into something pretty great that, that's kind of what i feel with keon coleman yeah physically they're very similar probably a little bit faster than people give him credit for on the field especially he, he plays faster with the ball so yeah i like that i like keon sneaking into the first round don't think he has in any of our mocks and i could definitely see it happening yes sir we just cooked your post first wave free agency mock draft is now on the books here dan what do you what do you what do you grade us on this? There there's some bold stuff, you know. We we might get flamed in the comments um for for two picks in a row, um, 19 and 20, but you know, it's it's fun, it's exciting. Yeah, 18, 19, uh definitely interesting stretch. Some people will will I, I like every pick though. I like every fit, especially. I think all the fits make sense and you know the the logic between everything makes sense. Um, no bow nicks is interesting, I think. There's like a 50-50 chance he goes in the first round. Uh, I agree. Fire mock up. Exit hot take for the Panthers. Who are they taking at 33, though? <laughs> Should have been more prepared at this, man. Should have been more prepared at this, but they just went out and got Deontay Johnson. I don't think they stopped there, man. Give me Ricky Pearsall. Give me Ricky <laughs> Pearsall. That's where he falls. Ricky Pearsall, the Panthers at 33. Exit hot take. 33, you know, um, sorry. Technically one <laughs> round mock, but you know, we added the 33rd pick in for the Panthers. You love to see it. Ricky Pearsall, Adam Thielen, Deontay Johnson, Bryce Young is going to cook. Yeah. Three insane route runner intermediate guys. Uh, Bryce Young would 
compliment them all. So yeah, Ricky Pierce, all of the Panthers, you heard it here first, the electric X hot take and yeah, fun uh, mock draft, a lot of good fits, fun finding all these fits and talking about the, you know, the first wave for agency signing. So a lot of fun news shaking up the league. Uh, thanks for tuning in to another NFL Seekers podcast. Like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for the NFL offseason content. We'll have a lot coming out here. So thanks for tuning in. Peace. Peace.